Okay, before I start the review, let's just get it out of the way. They're talking vehicles. That doesn't matter. At this point, who cares? We already know that sucks. Bad idea. Let's move on. Just characters and story. And immediately it starts off with just the saying, this movie is dedicated to firefighters who risk their lives every day to put out fires and save lives. Uh, at first, when I first saw that, when the movie started, I'm like, oh god, it's a crappy movie, but they're going to make me feel guilty for not liking it because it's dedicated to firefighters. But, not really, the fire is actually terrif- the fires they're fighting are actually terrifying. I, fire, no matter how you portray it in any movie, if it's a kid's movie or an actual adult movie, uh, fire is going to be terrifying to look at, especially when it starts burning uh, wood, uh, woodlands, cities. It is, it's a terrifying sight to see. So, I like that. They really did the, a good job of making fire look deadly. Like, you should be afraid of going even near the fire. But, oh no, let's just get started. The first 10 minutes of the movie, bad. Don't like it. it. That's where all the bad car puns are. That's where all the annoying characters from the first movie are. Uh, that's where all the uh, racing happens. And like, hey, I got these trophies. I'm world famous now. Like, yeah, we've seen this before with Speed McQueen. There's even references to the Cars uh, movies. So again, first 10 minutes, no. Don't like it. Although it does bring up a good scene of the old fire truck and he's outdated, he's getting old. But all he really needs is an upgrade. But however, there needs to be two firefighters. So Dusty has to go get licensed. And now this is where the movie starts, you know, to actually get better compared to, well, compared to the previous movies in the first 10 minutes. Um... He gets to the academy, and immediately you see it's kind of old, it's sort of abandoned. It's because of the supervisor who's kind of an asshole. He t he wants all the money, so of course immediately you know he's gonna be the one, the dick that screws everyone over and puts everyone in danger of a f of the fire. That's that's a that's a good point to bring out now. This movie, for the most part, is predictable. Uh, Dusty breaks his gearbox, meaning he can't go super fast or he'll crash. You immediately know. He's going to have to be forced to go really fast and through some miracle he's going to crash. Or he's not going, through some miracle it works but he's still going to crash. Something's going to happen, some tragedy. You meet a character, a mechanic, you immediately know, who likes to say, oh, I don't, I, we don't have new parts, I just remake them. They're better than you. It's like, okay, so he's the one that's going to fix the gearbox. Like, okay, yeah, I see where this is going. So more for the most part, this movie is predictable. Whether that's good or bad, it's up to you because predictability uh, is not always a bad quality in a movie as long as they're able to make it the journey still interesting enough that I don't care where I know where it's going. I just want to know how it gets to that point. Uh, then we see me a lot of the characters and yes, there are stereotypes. The Especially the Indian. Uh... Now, granted, I've never met an Indian, but I can pretty much say they don't always speak in some folklore way or analogy or anything like that. Coyote walks onto the moon, like, no, 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 I'm pretty sure Indians don't introduce themselves that way. Stop that. Uh, but yeah, it's very stereotypical. It can be uncomfortable if you don't like the stereotyping. Uh, the stalker girl we seen you see in the trailer. Uh, I feel like could have been a decent female friend for Dusty to meet without the whole "I watch you when you sleep" or "I'm your biggest fan." It's like, ah, yeah, stop it! It's not cute. It's not funny. Stop. Uh, but then again, you, when we finally meet the mentor, kind of the you know the old gritty guy who doesn't like Dusty because. Uh, he's a newbie. Uh, you get the feeling like, what's his backstory? Something happened to him, he broke down. But no, he actually does have a decent, tragic backstory. Uh, spoilers here, but he plays, he used to play a TV actor for a, a what looks like an 80s cop show. And it was called Chops. <laughs> okay. Um, and he had a sidekick. Or a partner. And I like how they bring this little uh, parallel that he used to play a cop, someone who saved lives on TV. 
But then when his partner uh, got in an accident and w needed help, he didn't know what to do. He wasn't a professional. He, he didn't know how to actually save anyone. He just sat there like, oh my god, my friend is in danger and I don't know what to do. And he dies. And I actually felt bad for the guy because... Like they said, he used to, he played a character that saved lives on TV. But when it came down to it, he couldn't save even his own best friend. So that's when he just decided, you know what? I'm going to get licensed. I don't want this to ever happen again. He stopped being an actor and actually went to become an actual firefighter to save lives. To make up for his uh, lack, of expert, lack of ability when his friend needed help. And that's a very good backstory that I can really get behind. And I like that this movie didn't have that whole, oh my god, you lied to me, you're dead to me, go away. Like, no, no, no. They didn't have that. Dusty, throughout the whole movie, was hiding the fact that his gearbox died so he couldn't fly as fast as he needed to be to be the best firefighter he could be. When it's finally revealed, uh, the old mentor, which whose name is Blade Rain. Blade Ranger. I'm sorry I already mentioned that before. His name is Blade Ranger. Good name. Uh, didn't really care. He just seemed like, hey, uh, shit happens. You're going to break down. You're going to have a missing part. You're going to have a broken part. You know, the best thing to do is get over it. Find a new way to get around it. Find a new way to, a new reason to keep fighting, so to, so to speak. And I like that. I like that he didn't, oh, you betrayed me. Like, no, 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 no. I understand. Shit's gonna happen to you. You just gotta get over it. So that's... I literally like that. Uh, but anyway... Once the giant wildfire, the climax starts happening... And they start flying into the smoke and they see the whole valley and just on fire... It is actually terrifying. I know no one's gonna die. It's a Disney movie. Uh, but still... Any fire, no matter how small it is, will get someone in a panic because fire ultimately is a dangerous element to um, be in contact with, be around a. And I, I like how they make sh make sure that then they'll make it look too f kid friendly. They it is burning entire forests. It, it is uh, threatening people. It actually does injure a lot of the firefighters in this movie. And it actually is does a bit of, give a bit of suspense. Now I didn't know, don't know if we needed a sec secondary antagonist, the uh, so to say the supervisor, if that if that even if you have a name, but he was there. He was an asshole throughout throughout the whole movie, screwing everyone over, taking water just to save his hotel, and. He got fired in the end, but I wanted him to get more of a comeuppance. Part of me actually wanted me... Part of me wanted him me... Ah! Part of me actually wanted him to die. But I know, like, okay, no, that's it's a Disney movie. I can't expect him to die. But... Yeah, he does get some comeuppance. It's not on screen, which I didn't like. I wanted to see him cry or something. Some, just something. Uh, but other than that, the characters weren't too weren't too annoying. There weren't that too many annoying characters. Uh, the stereotypes were there; they were noticeable. It's just that I didn't need them. Uh, but they did get serious, even when they were jokey and annoying at times with their stereotypes. When it came down to fighting fires, they were all business. They got serious. They knew what they were doing. They immediately uh, started working. They didn't uh, let anything stop them from doing their job. And I like that. But all in all, this was a decent kids movie. It, it's a, definitely a lot better than the cars or the first planes. Uh, but there's still some noticeable flaws. The first 10 minutes, I didn't like. Again, car puns. Annoying characters. I'm done. Uh, the stereotype characters. They're there. Uh, secondary antagonists we didn't need. Uh, but all in all. You know, the threat of the fires. 
and some of the backstories for the firefighters and their work ethic is actually pretty decent. I actually like that. I can get behind it. So this was a decent, uh, decent movie, you know. As a sequel, it was a whole lot better than the first. Uh, as a standalone, it's actually very good. It's still a, it's still planes though. It's still talking vehicles. If you can't get past that, you're not gonna like it. But if you can, eh, it's not that bad. You're not gonna laugh that much, but eh. The comedy wasn't really the focus here because it was mostly just the threat of, of, of a forest fire. And just the image alone is enough of a message that fire, uh, forest fire is just deadly. Make sure you, you can prevent anything like that. But all in all, it's an okay movie. So, I'm Tony Dragon. Bye-bye.